Let's have a look at the XWinder Designer version 4.11. This is the designer software. And um, let's have a general overview. So on the top left, we've got a series of menus. Below that are um, these quick buttons. Below that is a toggle uh, option button to go between the 4-axis winding process and the 2. This video is about the 2-axis process. Below that, we have the most important inputs for the two axis, so the number of layers, the filament width in both inches and millimeter, and the thickness in both inches and millimeter. In the center portion is the winding schedule itself. We'll talk about each of those inputs. The top right, we have the winding checklist, which has five specific steps, with the winding being the third step in the middle. Below that are the actual uh, buttons to build and start the build process. We've also added a couple of additional items, which includes bringing the carriage home and then uh, also manually operating the carriage and the winder itself. And then also the trace pattern. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this is the file, the build file that we're currently working from. And in the bottom, you'll notice a schematic of the winder and the mandrel itself. In this case, we have um, a two inch uh, diameter mandrel of constant cross-section. You could have a linearly tapered mandrel um, if you'd like. And we'll also start with um, where the winding starts. So the z-axis position is zero here at this uh, in at this position. And to define that, uh, I'll click here for the offsets and that'll bring up the settings menu or the, uh, the, the settings window. There are four um, pages to the settings page and we'll first look at this offset. So this is the z-axis offset. So this is a very small schematic that sort of defines that, but it is defined as the z distance from the delivery head midpoint to the closest face of the right chuck plate when the carriage activates the limit switch. So this is really just the reference or the zero point and we'll measure all z distances from this chuck plate face reference point. In this case Depending on where you located uh, the limit switch, the carriage limit switch, uh, we've measured a distance of 1.875 inches, or that's about, I can change that to, let's say, 1.50 um, inches. Uh, in general, for the Model 2X23, that distance is between 2 and 3 inches. Um, 1.875 is what we're using. And anyway, so you'll want to measure that exactly before you do any winding process. Uh, and so that will define where, where you're measuring all of your Z distances from. In this case, we start with four and we move down to a distance of 42. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the winding schedule itself. Um, what I've done here, I'm gonna start a new file. Uh, and then rather than go through all the input for this very short video, I'm gonna click open and bring up one of the default files that's in the design file directory, which is the one we were just looking at. Um, okay, so for this is the first layer at 75 degree winding angle. We have it set at a speed of medium. You can obviously select be between slow, medium, and fast. To define your speeds, you'll want to bring up the settings pages again and go to speeds. And here you can set the speeds that are defined as slow, medium, and fast. Note that the maximum available carriage speed for the 2x23 and the 4x23 is nine inches per second or about 228 millimeters per second. So I'm setting a fast limit here of let's say seven inches per second. I'm gonna set medium at four and slow at two. So if I operate the carriage at seven inches per second, which is 180, 100, 177 millimeters per second, when I, get all that additional speed, I'm giving up torque. So any time that you're running either the mandrel stepper motor or the carriage stepper motor at a higher speed, you are giving up torque so that if you have a high filament tension or a large mandrel diameter, you may not be able to accomplish that at the highest speed because you'll want torque for those larger measurements. Uh, in any event, so we could ramp up the uh, speed of this first winding to fast if we wanted to that would move the mandrel at 44 and a half revolutions per minute and, uh, and the carriage at 1.25 inches per second 
we can also switch between millimeters yes and we can switch back to inches and you'll notice that so the input is can be done in both inches and millimeters by uh, this um, menu item or just simply by clicking here um, and so all of these pass distances the passes are um, basically the coverage algorithm based on the filament width and the winding angle the number of passes to entirely cover the surface area of the mandrel. I did miss this additional end angle so f in this particular winding layer if we wanted to add an additional revolution to each time that the carriage comes to a dwell at the end of the length of the mandrel in this case at 4 or 42 we could add an additional revolution or additional 360 degrees if we wanted to um, at low winding angles in the two axis mandrel you may want to be adding additional um, angle and particularly so for example here at the lower 45 degree winding angle you may want to add an additional 180 degrees or something of that sort um, you you'll be able to tell after you have uh, gone through some trial and error process so let's I'm going to save this file um, that's always obviously very important um, let's have a look at the G code so this is the code that's actually output by the designer um, and a lot of the uh, the vocabulary here in this G code is somewhat uh, straightforward and it is very much um, akin to a lot of the G code perhaps you've seen in the past uh, this is the file obviously that will be read directly in by the executor when it operates uh, let's also go back to the settings and look at some of the other settings so many of these are self-explanatory uh, and in particular for the two axis winding you'll see some additional uh, inputs here that allow different options during the winding process the four axis uh, inputs are for a different video and we have already talked about the speeds so I'm going to go ahead and start the build process here with this particular file with this four layer file So I'm going to click here to build up comes the executor and the carriage starts moving to the home position to begin the winding process so that's basically it I'm gonna go ahead and kill that so we will talk about the executor in another video but in general that's pretty much it for the version 4.11 X winder designer software